Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to customize the button on the event list in your Squarespace website. This view event button is set to match the primary button style that you've assigned in your site styles menu. But using just a little bit of custom code, we can do things like change the background color, the font size, even the shape of that button, and create our own custom hover effects. All of the codes I'm about to share with you are listed in the description below, but I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen to teach you exactly how to use them in Squarespace. Let's get started. Here we are inside Squarespace looking at an event list, and here we have the view event button, which is gigantic because it's designed to match the primary button style for my Squarespace website. Way too big for this page, so let's customize it with code. I'm going to navigate to Pages on the left-hand side of the screen here, and then I'll select Website Tools and then Custom CSS. Now, it's very easy to remember the selector class for this one, but I'm still going to paste this in the description below. That button goes by the code name of Event List Dash Button. All right, we've added that code name. Let's open up a curly bracket, enter a new line, and we'll customize it. First things first, I'm going to reduce the size of the font. I'm going to say Font Size 16px exclamation point important, and immediately the font size will be reduced. Now I wanna mention in this specific tutorial, we're going to say exclamation point important a lot because we're overriding the settings that are already there inside Squarespace. We have to make sure that Squarespace knows our code is more important than the site styles code that is making it match our primary button, okay? So we're gonna say exclamation point important quite a lot. All right, next up, I want to change the size of this button. The padding is way too big for me. So I'm going to type a semicolon and enter a new line. And here I can say padding 5px exclamation point important. And that'll reduce the padding a lot. Honestly, I think it's a bit too much. I'd like it to be 5px on the top and bottom, but I want a little more padding on the left and right. So what I'm actually going to say is 5px, 15px. This first value will be the vertical padding. The second value is the horizontal padding. Do you see how there's a little more space between the edge of the button and the V and this arrow and the right edge? That is the 15px. The vertical padding is the 5px. All right, let's go ahead and give it a different shape as well. I'll add a semicolon and we're gonna say border radius. How about 50px exclamation point important. And now we've curved in the corners to create that pill shaped button. You can do a smaller curved corner, maybe 5px if that suits the style of your site, but I want mine to be very different, so I'm going to say 50. There we go. Now, it's still pretty close to the text above it, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a margin to scoot that button down the page just to scotch. We'll add a semicolon, and I'm going to say margin top, 5px, scoot it down a little bit. Okay, how about 15? There we go. Now the margin is not a setting that has to do with the style of the button. So we didn't have to say exclamation point important. These are overriding the style of the button. This is just changing the location a little bit, just in case you were curious as to why we didn't need to say that word again. All right, two more things I wanna do here. Let's go ahead and change the color of the button itself. We'll add a semicolon and I'm gonna say background and I'll make it this light shade of blue that I enjoy, exclamation point important. There we go. And let's change the color of the font. We'll say color and we'll make it a dark gray color. I'll say important. There we go. Now I think a border would really make this thing pop. Let's go ahead and do that as well. We'll say border 1px solid same gray color as the font exclamation point important. And now our button is completely different but still oh so clickable. Now that we've customized the font size, we've changed the size of it by adjusting the padding. We changed the shape of the border radius. We scooted it down just a little bit, gave it a different background color, a different font color, and a border. Let's move on to the hover effect, one of my favorite things to code. To create this hover effect, we're going to use the same selector class. We're going to say event list button, and then we're going to add a colon symbol and say hover and open up our curly bracket. Here's what we're going to change on a hover state. I'm going to change the background to that dark gray color. And I'm going to change the color of the font to that light blue that I like. And we'll say important. There we go. And now when we hover over that button, we get that effect. But I want you to notice it's kind of a lighter gray, isn't it? The standard hover effect for that button on my Squarespace website is to change the opacity and make it a little bit transparent. So we should fix that too. I'm going to add a semicolon and I'm going to say opacity one important. And now 
We've got the full color effect. There we go. That looks a lot better. All right, one last thing I'd love to teach you before we call this tutorial a wrap is how to slow down this hover. Right now it's happening instantly, but we can slow that down a little bit to make it smoother. In our very first set of code right here, I'm on line eight. I'm gonna enter one more line of code and I'm gonna say transition all one S exclamation point important. And what this says is that anything that's going to change when it's in a different state, like a hover state, take one second to make those changes take place. And now when we hover over the button, it takes a full second for those colors to flip. Pretty cool, right? Now you can slow that down a bunch if you want to, maybe five seconds. I think that's way too long. I think one second is perfect for my own unique style here, but super customizable, just like the rest of this code. After you've made all the changes you want to see, select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. You'll find all of those codes underneath the video along with links to related tutorials that can help you customize your Squarespace events. So definitely check those out if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Find everything you need to make Squarespace uniquely yours at InsideTheSquare.co. That's InsideTheSquare.co.